Hello YouTube, my name is Chris and I'll be covering the tutorial found on the Hopper app website and give you a short list of likes and gripes at the end. First, if you're interested in Hopper, keep in mind there's probably only one other solution that comes similar to Hopper and that is IDA. IDA is a program developed by Hexrays and cost about cost approximately 10 times the amount of Hopper and probably isn't developed by one person so comparing the two is well, difficult to say the least. IDA and Hopper are both applications that run natively on OS X and both applications attempt to disassemble Mako binary formats. Hopper will definitely assist you in your static analysis of executable files and the idea behind Hopper is to transform a set of bytes, i.e. a binary, into something that can be read by a human. If you're familiar with Xcode, Apple's native Objective-C tool for building applications for OS X and iOS, you'll be reminded by a similar interface elements. Hopper's main window is broken up into three main interface elements. A left pane, a right pane, and a center pane. When one loads a binary in Hopper, it proceeds with automatic analysis as soon as the file is loaded. The left pane contains a list of symbols to find in the executable being analyzed. The right pane, also called the inspector, contains various contextual information being explored. The center pane is where the assembly language is presented to the user. The various types of bytes that can be used in Hopper are data, ASCII, code, procedure, and undefined. Hopper provides a toolbar with various types of bytes to transform data. If one makes a mistake applying a transform to a byte, Hopper provides an undo feature. Apparently new in version 3, the undo feature is unlimited. Next comes navigating through a file. Hopper loads an executable file and splits into smaller pieces of data called segments and sections. When an operating system loads an executable, some parts of its bytes are mapped into memory. Each contiguous piece of the file is mapped into memory called segments. These segments are split up into smaller parts called sections, which will receive various access properties. Because it would become quite cumbersome to memorize the address where each piece of code lies in an executable, Hopper provides a pane with symbols, tags, and strings. This allows one to search for a specific piece of code based on human, readable name. When searching for human readable names to a specific piece of code, Hopper provides a fuzzy search. The fuzzy search can be disabled in the Hopper preferences. Navigating through the code. Hopper provides a navigation stack for viewing various parts of an executable. One can easily go back to the previous view in the executable by pressing the delete key or the backspace key. Also, there are two buttons in the upper left corner of the main window that provide the back and forward functionality. The navigation bar. The navigation bar provides an overview of an executable and is clickable providing functionality to jump around to various pieces of code in an executable. A color scheme is provided to indicate the various types of bytes presented in an executable. Real quickly, the color scheme is as follows. Blue represents code. Yellow represents procedures. Green represents ASCII strings. Purple represents data. And gray represents undefined bytes. A little red arrow will indicate where one is presently located in the program. Next, Hopper provides a control flow graph. There is a button in the toolbar of the main window that provides a visual control flow of a procedure in Hopper. Decompiler. There's also a pseudocode button that is used to in invocate the decompiler. The idea of the decompiler is to transform the assembly language instructions into higher level language syntax such as C. It doesn't give a one-to-one -one high level language translation, but it does provide a starting point for how 
the assembly language instructions could translate into high-level language. Mileage will vary depending on the executable being decompiled. As stated on the website, Intel executables will currently provide the best results. Modifying the file. Once one has found a change they want to make in a, to an executable, they can modify it with Hopper's built-in hexadecimal editor. Hopper automatically highlights the bytes that are part of the current instruction selected in the assembly language view, thus providing synchronization between the two editors. To make changes in the hex editor, just double click on a byte. So some of my gripes with Hopper are the tag scope. Tag scope shows you human readable text for an executable, but currently if your binary or executable has a significant amount of tags in it, you can't expand the view to see all the tags. Also, the tooltips for Hopper appear to be a bit stubborn. When comparing with Xcode tooltips, this makes a bit of a learning curve for new users who are trying to learn what the various buttons do. It could be nice if the tooltips contained key bindings or keyboard shortcuts for the button. I'm not sure if Apple has an interface guideline that prevents displaying a key binding in a tooltip but it seems it would be useful for new, new users who want to learn the keyboard shortcuts. However, the key binding slash keyboard shortcuts can easily be found in the menu bar of the application. Overall, for $90, Hopper comes in at a bargain as compared to the other guy. It provides nice syntax highlighting for assembly language code. It provides nice features that one can use for various stages for decompiling a binary. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed please subscribe for more videos.